The Dutch have long been famous for their flowers. In the 17th and 18th centuries, they were also renowned as flower painters. The pick of the bunch was Rachel Reisk. She was born in 1664 and lived and worked in The Hague and Amsterdam. Having ten children did not prevent her becoming one of the leading creators of floral still lifes. Rachel's father was a professor of anatomy and botany in Amsterdam, so she had access to exotic plants brought from the Far East and elsewhere by Dutch traders. She often included new kinds of flora in her work and insects as well. Women artists everywhere were advised to paint flowers. Flowers were deemed to be a feminine subject and not as serious as subjects involving human figures in religious, mythological and historical narratives. But in 17th century Holland, flower paintings did convey many serious messages and were created by both male and female artists. Unlike their contemporaries in Italy, for instance, who painted mostly religious narratives, Dutch artists embraced secular themes. Holland was experiencing a golden age of prosperity. The new middle classes living in towns had money to spend on art. They wanted local landscapes, vignettes from ordinary life, still lifes, and images of flowers. Rochelle works in a highly detailed, lifelike style. Many of her early compositions juxtapose cultivated and wild flowers on a forest floor on which moss and mushrooms grow. One example belongs to the State Museum in Kassel, Germany. In this painting, Rochelle arranges a bunch of flowers that includes roses, peonies, lilies, irises, daisies, and a black tulip around a dead tree trunk. A grasshopper moves toward a red rose. More tiny creatures appear below. A small lizard sits on a rock at the base of the tree trunk. Two moths hover near the lizard. To the left of the rock, there's a frog, a snake, and two snails. Part of the darkened forest can be seen in the distance on the left. A later painting from around 1690 belongs to the National Gallery in London. Rochelle offers a varied bouquet of mostly cultivated flowers. They sit in a vase placed on a stone ledge, which juts out toward us from a darkened space. Our eyes are drawn first to a well-lit gathering of pink peonies, red tulips, white dog roses and lilies in the lower half of the composition. A large peony takes centre stage, while red, pink and white flowers and green leaves are arranged casually but neatly around it. This type of order gathering is traditional, but like a typical 17th century Baroque painter, Rachel infuses her work with movement and drama. She does this by adding flowers outside of this circle in what looks like a random placement. Long stem plants with small darker flowers fill the top right and top centre. One red rose, not yet in full bloom, leans out on the lower right and the stem without a flower falls onto the ledge on the left. These long stem darker and less ordered flowers provide a contrast tending to pull the composition apart while the centre grouping stabilises it. This visual tension makes for a dramatic composition. The strong contrast between dark and light also adds drama. A collection of expensive blooms conveys a mood of abundance and opulence. Some paintings were commissioned by flower growers to showcase their botanical accomplishments and advertise their talents to prospective customers. An artist can bring together flowers from different seasons, so a painting can make a better advertisement than a vase of the real things. But serious thoughts can also be gathered from such pictures. Since real flowers wither in no time and painted ones last forever, some viewers saw this as a comment on the superiority of art over nature. Others saw an ode to the virtue of hard work. For some viewers, the abundance and variety of plants in a painting was proof of nature's munificence. For others, it pointed to the existence and generosity of God. Rochelle includes flowers from different stages of their lives. 
Some flowers are shown at the height of their beauty. The obvious moral is that decay and death are just around the corner, not just for flowers, but for humans too. Ideas about decay and death tab into the theme of vanitas. The body decays and dies, but the soul can live forever. Looking after the body at the expense of the soul leads to the death of the soul. Examples of flowers at different stages of life include the white dog rose on the left, which has flowers in full and partial bloom. A branch just below it is withering. Some of its leaves are starting to turn brown and are marked with holes. They may have been eaten by some of the little beasties in the painting. A grasshopper perches on the edge of the ledge. A large beetle lies in the central peony. At least two yellow caterpillars can be seen, the most obvious one standing out against the middle of the dark vase. Insects devouring the plants serve as reminders of life's fragility. The caterpillar can symbolize human's earthly existence, while its transformation into a butterfly represents Christ's resurrection and life after death. At a time when the importance of an artistic genre depended on its moral content, this kind of symbolism enabled flower painting to be taken seriously. In a later work from about 1745, Rachel places her dynamic bouquet against a more complex architectural setting. The vase of flowers sits on a stone ledge in front of the base of a column. A window or door in the distance on the right gives to this side of the painting a sense of infinite depth. Rachel died in Amsterdam in 1750. She painted for more than 70 years and her paintings fetched high prices during her lifetime. About 250 of her paintings are known.